Hey everyone, I'm Ahmed Gad. I'm a research assistant at University of Ottawa and working with Paperspace on different machine learning projects. If you don't know really, Paperspace is a cloud computing platform for GPU accelerated applications like machine learning. Today, I'll be showing you how to train Kira's model using the genetic algorithm. In this project, we will use an instance of Paperspace Gradient that has a free GPU. Generally, Machine learning models are trained using gradient-based algorithms like gradient descent. So why you would use a genetic algorithm? There are two reasons. The first reason is that the genetic algorithm can work with non-differentiable and non-convex functions, but gradient-based algorithms usually work with only differentiable and convex functions. And the second reason is that the genetic algorithm doesn't suffer from two common problems with gradient-based algorithms which are vanishing and exploding gradients. And this is because the genetic algorithm updates the parameters of all layers at once. This is compared to the gradient-based algorithms that update the parameters layer by layer. For building the genetic algorithm, we will use a Python library called PyGAD, which is an open source library that supports training Keras and PyTorch models. After the library is installed, we will verify its installation by printing the version of the library, which is 2.14.2. The next library we will use in this project is TensorFlow, and we will install TensorFlow for GPU because the instance of Gradient is supporting a free GPU. After TensorFlow is installed, we will also verify its installation by printing its version, and we will find that the version of TensorFlow installed is 2.4.1. Before talking about training or optimizing Keras models using the genetic algorithm, Let's start discussing a simple optimization example, where a function has four inputs and one output. Each input has its own weight, and the sum of product between each input and weight is returned as output. For example, the values of the four inputs are 4, minus 1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2, and the output is 9. What are the values of the four weights W1 to W4 that satisfy this function? The genetic algorithm can be used to find the values of the four weights. Let's see how we can use the PyGAD library for optimizing this simple function. With PyGAD, we will follow five simple steps to optimize this function. The first step is to build a fitness function, which is a normal function in Python that accepts two parameters. The first one is the solution, which groups all the four weights evolved by the genetic algorithm. And the second one is the index of this solution in the population. Using the solution, we will calculate the sum of product between each weight evolved by the genetic algorithm in the solution and the input, and return the output. Based on this output, an error is calculated as the absolute difference between the output and the correct output, which is 9 in this example. But the fitness function must be a maximization function, and up to this time, the error function is a minimization function which means less error means a good solution. But for the fitness function in the genetic algorithm, it is expected that the higher the fitness value, the better the solution. In this case, the fitness is calculated as one over the error. And because the error can be zero in some times, we will be adding a very small value to the denominator of this function to return the fitness value at the end. And the next step in using PyGAD to optimize this function is to create an instance of a class called GA in the PyGAD module. You can find more details about this class in the documentation, but we will use some of its parameters, including number of generations, which is set to 100, and number of parents that's used in mating and generating the offspring, which is 10, and the fitness function, which is a fitness function we built previously. And number of solutions in the population is 20, and this means the population has 20 solutions and only 10 solutions are used for mating and creating the new population. The number of genes is equal to the number of inputs, which is 4. And finally, there is a boolean parameter called suppress warnings, which is set to true to suppress any warning messages. The instance of the PyGAD.GA class has a method called run, which runs the genetic algorithm to start the evolution. And once this method completes, there is another method called plot result, which creates a plot showing how the fitness value changes by changing the generation. 
There is another method called best solution, which returns information about the best solution found using the genetic algorithm. Here we return the best solution parameters and the fitness value of the best solution. You can find the parameter of this best solution that the fitness value is 1726. And based on this solution, the model prediction is 9.000, which is very close to the target. And finally, the genetic algorithm found this solution after passing only 69 generations. And here is a complete code for solving the previous problem. Here we started by defining the input and output and building a fitness function, creating an instance of the GA class, calling the RAM method of this class, followed by calling the plot result method, and finally the bit solution method. Let's now move to using this library for training Kira's models. We will follow 10 steps to train a Kira's model for regression using the genetic algorithm with PyGAD. The first step is about preparing the training data. And this problem has 4 samples and each sample has 4 inputs and 1 output. The second step is building the Kira's model. In this case, the model has an input layer with 3 inputs a dense layer with 5 neurons and finally a dense layer for the output with 1 neuron and this layer using a linear activation function because we are solving a regression problem and finally the model is created and saved in the model variable and the summary method of the Keras model shows the model architecture which has a total of 26 trainable parameters and the next step in training a Keras model using the genetic algorithm is to create an instance of a class called Kira GA that's available in the Kira GA module. The constructor of the Kira GA class accepts two parameters. The first one is the model we created previously, and second one is the number of solutions in the population, which is 10 in this example. And the instance helps us to return the initial population, which has a group of solutions for the model. And next is to build the fitness function which accepts already two parameters as we discussed previously, the solution, which is 26 parameters for the model, and second one is the index of this solution in the population. The fitness function starts by calling a function that's called model weights as matrix, which accepts the model and the solution, and the solution is passed as a 1D vector, and this function returns the solution in matrix form. This form can be set as the current weights of the Keras model using the set weights, which accepts the model weights we already converted into matrix form, and then the mean absolute error is calculated between the original outputs and the model predictions. And finally, the fitness value is calculated for this solution and returned by the fitness function. After building the fitness function, we will create an instance of the GA class, which accepts the same parameters we discussed previously. In addition to the initial population, which accepts the initial population created by the Keras GA instance, and the second one is the on generation that accepts a callback function to be called after each generation. In this case, the function accepts the instance of the GA class and prints the number of generations passed and the fitness value of the best solution found up to this time. Now we are ready to call the RAM method that starts the evolution of the genetic algorithm over a number of generations equal to 250. And according to the output of the callback function, we can find that the best solution found has a fitness value of 66. The plot results method can be called in order to show how the fitness value changes by changing the generation and some information about the best solution found by the genetic algorithm can be printed, like the solution parameters and the number of these parameters in 26, which is equal to the number of trainable parameters of the Keras model, and the fitness value of the best solution is 66 as we saw previously. And once the model is trained, we can make predictions by following three steps that are already covered in the fitness function. The first one is to convert the solution from 1D form to a matrix form by calling the model weights as matrix function. Then the weights are set to the model using the set weights method. Then the model predictions are returned by calling the predict method. And here are the model predictions 
compared to the correct outputs. We can see that the predicted outputs are close to the correct outputs, like the last output is 2.49 compared to 2.5 for the correct output, and the model predictions can be enhanced by using more generations. And based on the predicted and correct outputs, we can measure the loss of the model using the mean absolute error, and the error is 0 0.015. At this point, we have completed the code for training Akira's model using Vigad for a regression example. Let's now move to train Akira's model for classification. Similar to the 10 steps followed for the regression example, we will follow the same steps for classification, but with some changes. The first change is about the training data. So we have new training data for classification of the XOR problem. And the second one is Akira's model. Now we have created also a curious model with three layers, but the input layer has two inputs and the output layer has two outputs. And the activation function used for the output layer is softmax because we are solving a classification problem. Here is the model summary, which has only 22 trainable parameters. As regular, an instance of the Kiras GA class is created in order to create the initial population for the genetic algorithm and the fitness function now calculates the binary cross entropy. An instance of the GA class is created as we did previously with the regression example, and then the RAM method is called, and we can find that the last generation, which is the generation number 250, has a very large fitness, which means the prediction error is very small. Now the plot result method is called to show how the fitness value changes by changing the generation and some information about the best solution are returned using the best solution method which returns the solution parameters and the number of parameters as expected is 22 which is equal to the number of trainable parameters of the Keras model and here is the fitness value of the best solution. And based on the trained model we make predictions and here are the predicted outputs out of the softmax layer compared to the correct output. Now we can measure the loss and the accuracy and we can find the loss is very small and the accuracy is one, which means all the samples are classified correctly. That's it for this tutorial. Just to recap, we saw how to use the genetic algorithm library called PyGAD for training Kira's models. We discussed how to create a fitness function for training a Kira's model, how to build an initial population for the Kira's model using the Kira's GA class and creating an instance of the GA class, start the evolution by calling the RAM method and finally use the best solution found by the genetic algorithm to make predictions by the Kira's model. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or in Twitter at Hollow Paper Space. Gradient offers a free GPU plan so you can run this project at no cost. I highly recommend checking that out. Thanks for watching.